Hey everyone, I'm Ian Dilly. And I am Michael Sheehan, and behind us is the wall of the Kofenberg. This is one of the most infamous climbs in all the Tour of Flanders. We're gonna go ride it and find out why it's both revered and reviled. Let's go check it out. Guess what's next? The mighty Kofenberg. Now the Kofenberg is one of those climbs that runs a thin line between providing beautiful spectacle and absolute disaster. In 1985, Belgian rider Eric van der Raden was the only rider capable to make it to the top without walking. Two years later, Danish rider Jesper Skibbe fell off his bike on the steepest pitches of the climb while leading the race. The race director's car ran over his bicycle, and this incident led to the decommission of the climb for many years to come. It was out of the Tour of Flanders for 15 years until the town of Udenarde refurbished the climb in 2002, but it remained on permanent probation. In 2006, only nine riders made it over the Kopenberg without walking. That led to the climb being excluded from the Tour of Flanders in 2007, but after it was refurbished again in 2008, it was put back in the Tour of Flanders and has remained ever since. That is not to say that it doesn't cause problems. There is a myth of a spring that runs underneath the climb, which causes the cobbles to constantly have a wet, slippery sheen on them and gives it a tendency to just deteriorate quicker than other cobbled roads around Belgium. Oh, and we've seen riders down, riders having a walk. Now in the modern day Tour of Flanders, the Kopenberg lies around 45 kilometers from the finish. It marks really the beginning of the end of race fireworks because from this point on, any attack could be a race winning move. And part of what makes the Kopenberg so hard in the Tour of Flanders right now is it's part of an insane trifecta that includes the Ode Quermont, the Paderberg, and the Kopenberg before the race goes to the finish. 